Hey, John from Superbase here, and today we're going to be learning all about route handlers, which are a brand new way to do serverless functions in Next.js. These replace what were previously known as API routes, but live alongside our server and client components in the app directory. Now, over the last few videos, we've been going pretty deep on all of the new things in Next.js and didn't want to cover all that same stuff here. So if you're keen to learn about client and server components, data fetching and caching or authentication, check out those links in the description. But maybe after you've watched this one, or maybe come back and watch this one. Either way, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and watch this video. Okay, let's get into it. We're gonna start off with this very simple Superbase project. If we head over to the table editor, we can see we have one table for to-dos. Each to-do has an ID and a created at, and then a title for what we actually want to do, and then whether or not this one is completed. We also have RLS enabled for this table, and we have three RLS policies written, so one for select, one for update, and one for insert. Now, each of these are exactly the same expression. They're just returning the value true, which enables this action. So essentially, anyone can read to-dos, anyone can update to-dos, and anyone can write to-dos. So they don't need to be signed in or be the one who created the to-do or anything like that. We'll look at that later. So let's create a Next.js application to display each of our to-dos. We're going to use MPX to run the create next app package. Now we're going to be playing with route handlers in the new app directory. So we need to set the flag dash dash experimental dash app. And then the name of my project is going to be route dash handlers. And this is going to step us through some questions to configure our project. I'm just going to leave all the defaults. So yes, TypeScript, yes, ESLint, no source directory, and the at symbol for our import alias. And when that's finished, we can change into our directory and open it up in VS Code. And if we have a look under app directory and API, we can see there's an example route handler for our hello route. And this is just responding with the text, hello next.js. So we can run our development server by typing npm run dev. And now if we navigate to localhost over port 3000 slash API slash hello, we'll see that text, hello next.js. So let's rename our route handler to be to-dos. And then we wanna make a request to our Superbase instance. And so let's quit our development server and run npm install or i at superbase slash superbase dash js. And once that's finished, we can run our development server again. And now to create a Superbase instance, we can call the create client function, which comes in from at superbase slash superbase js. And then this function needs to take in our Superbase URL and our anon key. So we can create a .env.local file at the rootmost part of our project. And in here, we want a next underscore public underscore superbase URL and a next underscore public underscore superbase underscore anon underscore key. And we can get these values from our Superbase dashboard. So if we go to settings and then API, we can copy the URL from here and our anon key from here. Now we can pass those across to our create client function by saying process.env.next underscore public underscore superbase underscore URL, and then the same for our anon underscore key. Now we can see we've got some red squigglies because TypeScript is not happy, basically saying these environment variables might not exist. So we can use the exclamation mark to say these values will exist in every environment that we're running in. And now we can make a request for some data by awaiting a call to Superbase. We wanna get data from the to-dos table and we want to select all columns. We can then return this data as our response, but our response is not happy because it can only take a string. And so instead we can return a next response which comes in from next slash server. And this has a JSON helper on it, which allows us to send back JSON data. So now if we save this file and then go back to the browser and navigate to slash to do's, we can see our to do's are coming back from Superbase. So if we wanted to display these results in our component, we could go back to our application and open up page.tsx and we'll replace all of that boilerplate with this very simple server component where we're setting revalidate to zero, meaning that we don't wanna do any caching. It's an async server component, so we can fetch data directly in the component itself. We're making a request to our route handler for to-dos and again, telling Next.js that we don't wanna cache these results. And then we're turning that response back into its JSON representation of our to-dos. We're then using this trick here with a pre-tag and json.stringify to pretty print our to-dos out on the page. So now if we go back to our application and navigate to our home route, we'll see a slightly prettier version of our to-dos. Now we're not gonna focus too much on styling in this one. This one is just about the route handlers themselves. But if you're keen for me to put all of these new Next.js app directory concepts together into a properly styled app, let me know in the comments. So this is 
pretty cool, but we're kind of just adding another layer between our component and selecting the data. Since we're already using async server components, we could actually make that request directly to Superbase in our component and then render our to-dos. But one of the cool things about putting this in a route handler is this can now be used by other applications as well. So if we also built a mobile app that could use the same data through these Next.js route handlers. But if this was just a Next.js application, I probably would do this logic directly in the server component itself. Now, something that people have been asking for from API routes for a long time is the ability to cache and revalidate that data similarly to what we can do in our server component. And now we can. Our route handlers are actually very similar to our server components. They just don't render an actual component. And so right now this seems completely dynamic. If we come back here and refresh, we see all of our to-dos. And if we were to go and add a new to-do to Superbase, so go over to the table editor and then click on our to-dos table and then insert a new row. And the title of this one can be explain caching and we can click save to insert that new row. Now, if we go back to our application and refresh, we'll see our new to-do for explain caching. But if we were to build a production version of our application, which we can do by running npm run build, and then we can run our application with npm start. Now, if we go back to the browser and refresh, we'll see our four to-dos. And now if we go back to Superbase and insert a new to-do for show prod build and click save to insert that new row. Now, when we go back to our application and refresh, we still only see four to-dos. So the caching of our route handler now follows the same rules as our server components. So by default, Next.js will cache this data that we got back from Superbase in our route handler. And if we wanna make this dynamic, so make a fresh request to Superbase every time we call our route handler, we can either export out a revalidate value like we're doing here in our server component, or if our route handlers are doing something dynamic, like performing server-side mutations based on a put or a post request, Next.js will detect that this is likely to change something and will switch off caching for this entire route handler. And so we can actually duplicate this get handler here and then change this method from get to post. And now we're listening for post requests. So if we save this, and again, run npm run build and npm start to emulate a production version of our application. Now, when we go back to the browser and refresh, we'll see all five of our to-dos. And if we add a new to-do for dynamic and then click save and go back and refresh our application, we'll see we get all six to-dos. So our route handler is making a fresh request to Superbase every time it receives a get or a post request. But it's a bit silly having a post request that's not doing posty things. So let's change our select statement to an insert to add a new to do with a title that we can pull out of our requests body. And we can do that by saying const and destructure title from awaiting a call to request.json. So now to send a post request from our application with a title, we're going to need a new client component. Now, if you don't understand the differences between client and server components, I recommend you click that card above for a video on just that. But for now, we're gonna create a new component called new to do.tsx. And I'm just going to paste in this component I prepared earlier. But if we start at the component itself, we're just rendering out a form with a single input for our title. When we submit that form, we're calling this handle submit function and that one's declared above. And in that one, we're just pulling the title out of our form data. We're then making a fetch request to that same route handler at slash API slash to do's. But this time we're passing an additional configuration object so we can set the method to something other than get. So we're setting it to post, which allows us to send a body across with our request, which needs to be a big string. So we're json.stringifying a JSON object with our title. And then because our route handler is actually going and inserting a new value into our Superbase database, we want our page.tsx file, which is displaying all of our to do's to make a get request to our route handler, which will make another request to Superbase and get a fresh list of to do's. And so to make all of that happen, we simply call router.refresh. And now the last thing we need to do is actually render our new to do component up in page.tsx. So we can refactor this return statement a little bit to render out a fragment. And then above our list of to do's, we're going to render out our new to do. And that comes in from dot slash new dash to do. And then we want to close this one and save. And now we can quit our server that's running our production build. And since we've now sorted out our caching, we can actually just run npm run dev to run our development server. And then we don't have to keep building our application every time we make a change. Now we can go back to the browser and refresh and we should see our beautifully styled input box. Now, if I add a new to-do and press enter, we'll see it appears in our list of to-dos. And if we go to Superbase 
and click refresh, we can see our new to-do has been written to the database. So what about being able to actually mark some of these to-dos as complete? Well, for that, we wanna to listen to a new method in our route handler. So again, we're just going to duplicate our post here and instead listen for the method put. And now instead of title, we're gonna be sending across the ID for the to-do that we wanna update. And then rather than inserting a new value, we want to update an existing value. We want to set the is complete column to the value true. And we only want to do that where there's a match for ID. So where the ID column of our to-do matches the ID that we sent across in the body of this put request. Now, if we save this one and go back to page.tsx, we still wanna render out each of our to-dos, but we also wanna be able to click any of those to-dos to mark them as complete. So let's create a new component to display each of our to-dos. We'll call this one todo.tsx. And again, here's a component I prepared earlier. And again, if we start with what we're rendering, we've got a button for each to-do. It's just wrapped in a paragraph, so they appear on different lines. This button displays the title of our to-do. And then when we click it, we call the handle complete function, which we've declared above. And this one just makes a fetch request to our route handler, sending a put request, and again, stringifying our ID for our specific to-do, and then calling router.refresh to fetch fresh data from Superbase. So let's go back up to page.tsx, and then instead of pretty printing our to-dos, we're going to map over each to-do and render our to-do component, which comes in from dot slash to-do. And then we need to pass this one a to-do to render, which is going to be equal to the specific to-do that we're iterating over. And let's close our component and save. And now to make TypeScript feel a little bit better about this to-do, which is implicitly any, we can declare a type for to-do above and then tell TypeScript that this one here is a to-do. Now you can use the Superbase CLI to introspect your Superbase database and automatically generate these TypeScript definitions. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But for now, if we save our component, go back to the browser, go to our application and refresh, we'll see our terribly styled buttons. But now if we click them, they just move around. Well, that's not very helpful. So let's go back to our route handler for our get action. So that's up the top. And let's add a match query to this select to say we only want to do's where is complete is set to false. And now when we refresh our application, dynamic will disappear. And if we click new to do, it will disappear. We've showed our prod build, we've explained caching, and now we've finished recording our route handlers video. Time to go to the shops and make some dinner. And that's how easy it is to create a route handler that can listen to different types of requests and perform server side mutations. Now let us know in the comments if there are any other Next.js topics you want us to cover. As a little sneak preview, in the next video, we'll be looking at combining route handlers with Superbase Auth to make sure that only the users who created a to-do can view or modify them. So make sure you're subscribed to the Superbase YouTube channel to hear when that one drops. But until then, keep building cool stuff.